Hi there. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a Wednesday morning and I'm sitting here, excuse me, with my coffee. Um, wishing you um, welcome to this moment of talking about how to break through. And the topic this week is our beliefs, our belief systems. I'm Emma Rowena. I'm a musician, a performer, uh, a producer. I'm also an intuitive reader and healer and work with meditations, energies, uh, for all kinds of people. If you're interested, if you like these videos and you're interested in uh, checking out my work, you can go to my website, emmarowena.no. Just wanted to say that. Uh, I forget to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I live in Norway and it's nine o'clock in the morning here. And I know this is a little bit of a difficult time for um, people to come live because either people have started work or, uh, or you're in a different time zone or, but I simply uh, will not um, push myself to do it earlier. This is the perfect time for me to do it. So I'm just um, hoping that people will catch it, um, the recording, if you can't make the live uh, video. And uh, it looks like uh, a lot of people do, so that is great. It means that maybe some of this has some value to some of you. Um, you're also very welcome to leave a comment um, or like the videos. Now, the topic of this week. It's your beliefs, your belief systems. Breaking through your belief systems. Now, again, as I say many times, do you have to? No, of course not. You do not have to do anything. You can choose whether you want to stay in the life you are in at the moment, in the situation you're in. Maybe it's a beautiful life and situation, fantastic. Or maybe it's a difficult one, but you're not ready to make a shift. That's also fine. But if you're here, my guess is maybe you're curious about what way you can move forward. And this is what I work with a lot, both personally and with other people, is finding those spots, those blocks, those um, belief systems, patterns um, that hold us back, that restrict us, that bring us down in one way or another for some reason or another. And then open up to release those things and try to start inviting in new patterns, new systems, new beliefs. And your belief system, it's, uh, your belief system governs your thoughts. Your thoughts govern your words and your actions. And this again governs your life, your choices. Um, do you believe that you can um, be free? Do you believe that you can be at peace? Do you believe you can heal? Do you believe um, that it's possible for you to live an abundant life? Or are you a little bit stuck maybe in a belief system that holds you back? These are questions um, and more I, uh, that I asked on Monday for people who watch that to reflect a little on because today we're going to go a little bit more uh, into the exercises. And one of them is uh, that I'd like to do and talk about is actually sensing your reactions or your emotions which are beautiful indicators of your thoughts and belief systems. So somebody said to me not long ago, emotions are difficult. And I thought about it and I said, well, I used to think that. I used to think life was complicated and difficult. I used to think emotions were impossible to deal with. You just, we react and I reacted a lot. I reacted from hidden belief systems, hidden thoughts, that I wasn't even aware of, and some I was aware of, but I did not want to look at them, I did not want to admit them, because I was full of judgments about myself, and that was one of the belief systems. I wasn't good enough. Um, and a lot of people walk around feeling this way. We're not good enough. We have to prove something to ourselves, to others. We have to pretend we're something else than we are. We lose our authenticity to ourselves and in the world. And this is what belief systems that we adopt from others, whether it's from your uh, carers, your uh, peers, 
your teachers, society, um, religious systems, whatever it is, these systems have you've adopted them in the attempt at trying to make sense of what it is like, what it, this being human thing is. What is it? I mean, it kind of seems unnatural in many ways. We do so many unnatural things, so many things that don't really make sense, uh, especially not to our nature, which is, in my opinion, in my experience, it is compassion, it is love, it is freedom, it is peace. Inside ourselves, there is a center, there's a heart that as far as, as far as I'm concerned and from what I experience when I work with other people is that there's a center that harbors all these beautiful, powerful, peaceful, um, what should I say, senses or, or states of being, that's what I was looking for. So it's not even an emotion, it's a state of being. But everything we learn in order to try to handle this world and this life, a lot of it goes against this. And so we get confused. We get depressed, maybe. Depressed. Somebody said this is a, a, a depression of energy. So depressed energy. You can feel it. And we're going to do that now, actually. We're going to try a little exercise where, we, um, where I give you a few terms. And this works in any language, but I'm doing it in English, of course. But it, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the sound of the word. It has to do the, with the meaning that we um, attach to the words. So if you think of the word opportunity, just think of it and, and sort of, OK, quickly think, what does it make you feel? Like? You don't have to understand it. You don't have to put words to it. Just well, opportunity. What does that feel like? Then go to limitation. What does that feel like? Can you feel the difference? Opportunity, to me that feels open, it feels lighter, it feels like a door is opening. Limitation feels more cringy, and I feel my body cringing. Maybe you can sense where in the body it's, it's stuck, this word. Where in the body does opportunity resonate to you? To me it resonates here in the chest, in the heart, and in the opening up of this. Uh, I'm going to put my coffee away so I can <laughs> use my arms. Um, whereas um, limitation sort of brings me a little bit into the solar plexus and it, it actually, I can feel it now, it, it, it uh, puts tension into my hips, which is my moving forward, right? Okay, let's try some other ones. How about fear? Can you feel fear, the word, the meaning? Okay, can you feel trust? To me, when I say trust, my body starts, leans back and relaxes. When I say fear, I, my breath gets shorter. Now, I'm, I'm showing the extreme sort of version of it, but this is the sensibility that you can develop to your own reactions, your own emotions. And emotions, again, are reflections of your thought patterns, your belief systems. When you react to a certain belief system, you often react in emotion. Again, emotions are beautiful. It's part of being human. And they're a very, very powerful language to you, showing you where you are, what's going on. So we don't want to suppress them. Again, suppress. How does that feel? Suppressing something. Ooh, it's like pushing something, mashing it together into a hard ball to me. Whereas flowing, flowing through to me, well, it's like a river flowing. It, there's movement. It's ease. Uh, it's easy. So. Uh, we want our emotions to speak to us and then acknowledge, ah, so that's what I'm feeling today. I wonder where that comes from. And maybe you can explore it and find out what belief system is triggering this. I'm going to do a little bit, uh, take the exercise a little bit further and, and bring into a few topics that can be very um, um, determinant of, of how you live your life. And there's so many opinions out there, so many teachings, so many rights and wrongs in so many topics. It's really hard to make sense of. And this is why I want, I want you to tune in and listen, because where is your voice in this? What is your truth, your belief? And try it out. Maybe you don't really know, but explore it. And if it feels wrong, let's take the food industry, the diet industry, for instance. There are very, very many 
powerful voices out there telling you that this is the best way to be healthy. This is the best way to lose weight. This is the only way to heal. Okay, so you want to try this on. You want to believe this. And then maybe if you lose track or you sort of fall off the, the wagon and, and then you start judging yourself because you can't do it. And it turns into this very painful relationship with everything that's got to do with nourishment and food and healing. So rather than um, allowing all these voices to be your truth, I invite you to start to explore your own sensibility and your own uh, ability to acknowledge what feels lighter, hence more mm, better for you. Now, there's a scale of emotions that uh, s sort of speaks of the frequency of emotions. Apparently, I just looked it up. Apparently, um, they say that they can't measure it, uh, measure this. But it's a beautiful scale anyway, because it puts sort of the a hierarchy of the emotions in terms of what um, what uplifts you. And at the bottom, you have um, shame and guilt and all these emotions. Now, let's let's just go sense it. Let's. Don't worry about the frequency, let's feel it. Okay, let's just take a moment. I generally don't want to give a, a lot of attention to these lower emotions because we put them in the body, but let's just practice it. Um, fear, anger, shame. Ugh, ooh, my whole body goes, ooh. And I can feel the sort of the cringy feeling inside of me. Now, okay, let's shift it to the higher, the, the ones at the top of this hierarchy are happiness, peace, love, uh, enlightenment, joy and passion is high, high up there. Let's do, let's do um, peace, um, let's do joy, playfulness. That's easy for those of you who, who, do, who are not ready to embro embrace the feeling of happiness and joy. Maybe you do, maybe you can remember a, a place where you've been very happy and joyful. You bring that in. Uh, also playfulness, um, excitement. Whew, I can feel everything starts to vibrate. Wow, and everything feels uh, exciting and I get this energy in my body. Now, there is an exercise or an experiment that has been measured. Dr. Emoto, a, ja a Japanese uh, scientist, he measured the molecules of water. He spent his whole life studying water. And he measured, he took uh, the technicalities, you're going to have to look up. But somehow he managed to take pictures of water molecules after they had been exposed to different words, sentences, emotions and music. Um, and he could see how they changed. Now we're 70% water in our bodies, in our systems. So when a water molecule exposed to the words peace or I love you, when they create these beautiful snow crystals, snow-like crystals, you know, you've seen snow crystals in close up, beautiful symmetrical uh, shape. And then when you, um, when you, when he put the words um, hate, um, dis I dis you disgust me to the water, it went into chaos. There was no shape or form, whatever. Can you imagine what this does to us? And can you imagine if this does something to our bodies? If I hate myself, I'm terrible, I'm not worthy. What does this do to our system? That food is dangerous. Fear is a very powerful emotion. If you're afraid of a food system, afraid of eating something you like, afraid of indulging, or afraid of not doing it the right way, what's it gonna do to your system? Can you imagine? So, um, and the same with um, other people. How do you relate to other people when you meet somebody? Let's see, you meet somebody from a different culture. And, and there's something in you that you've learned, and I talked about this on Monday, how we, from generations, from our societies, from our systems, from our religious systems, from teachings, from parents, from whatever, we learn, um, we have a history of looking at other people with skepticism, a certain groups of people, depending on who you are yourself, it could be women and men. How do you feel about women when you're a man? How do you feel about being a woman and vice versa? How do you feel about men? Are they a threat to you? How do you feel about being a man? Are you a threat? Are you grown up knowing that men are horrible because uh, we haven't been treating women rightly? All these things become ingrained in you. So let's say, um, imagine that you, you 
stand in front of a person from a different culture than yours and uh, choose a culture that is very different from yours maybe something you don't understand or know or maybe that, that maybe it's a culture that you know is exposed for a lot of, to a lot of discrimination what does that feel like to me can you sense the the sensation in your in your system your energy your body your emotions when you imagine this person what does it do to you now don't judge yourself in this this is just your a learned reaction that comes from way back probably because we've carried this for centuries and we've tried to break through with anger we've tried to break through with defense we try to break through but I believe that the ultimate breakthrough is in you whether you're a victim of discrimination or whether you you harbor some hidden belief about groups of people because we often don't want to admit, admit this just look at it and without blaming yourself try not to blame yourself or your system blame is a low e frequency it'll bring you down again uh, imagine feel it blame what does it do Boo. it feels mm, it feels gooey to me uh, how about acceptance acknowledgement to me that feels more neutral acceptance feels open and then exploring how you can shift so that you detach yourself from feeling anger, angry or shameful about these emotions, that's when you can start to heal. That's when you start breaking through your belief systems. So that's the one way, one direction you can move. Um, you have the same with abundance, money. Money is only part of abundance. Fear of money, a hatred of money, I mentioned it on Monday, uh, fear of not having enough, it's hard to get, it's really hard. I'll never be, uh, have enough. I'll never be wealthy, let alone, you know. And all these things is, are belief systems that we have. Well, people, why do some people grow up thinking they can always have everything? Well, they're taught, they've learned it. They know, they're just humans, but they've grown up in a, in a society or in a group or in a, an environment that opens up to it. And then some people break through their limitations and manage to do that anyway. Again, what is um, abundance? How does that feel to you? And how does lack feel? Lack feels, boom, down into my hip. It's like, ugh, heavy. Now the hip area can carry you in a beautiful way, but this feels like a, a, a rock hit my, 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 the bottom of my, of my tummy. Whereas abundance feels like my backbone can, is strengthened. That's my experience. You find your own. But this is a way of exploring your intuition, your self-awareness, and of getting to know yourself enough that you can start to em embrace who you are and choose your way. Uh, and intuition is going to be a topic either next week or the next or the week after. I'm, I'm either emotion or intuition next, next week. I haven't decided. We'll see. But now we're going to do the other um, exercise, which has to do with going to where you want to be and then looking at the belief systems that you are surrounded with and ingra in, ingrained in and that sort of saturates you when you're in that situation. Because we are saturated with these belief systems. Our whole body believes this. So we need to start to experience and explore what do I want to have in my body? What belief systems do I want to believe that I am enough? What's her name? Marissa? Here is it. She she talks about this. Her whole teaching, her, her whole foundation, it seems, is about I am enough. It's a beautiful, powerful message. And it releases so many things in you. Again, installing a new belief, creating new um, tracks in your uh, brain, in your thought patterns, like a, walking a new path, is as powerful or even more powerful than going back and re-examining all the old stuff because that will just strengthen the old paths so um, okay so let's what I invite you to do is choose one area one topic where you want to feel good you want to uh, maybe shift your belief system it couldn't be uh, anything related to abundance or finance it could be food health body it can be your relationships uh, it can be um, anything uh, the way uh, somewhere uh, a place where you want to feel good you want to feel free and 
and at peace with that situation. That is something, um, let's do that for now. You can choose yourself where you want to go, but that, those are the, the states of mind I would invite you to practice now. So what you do now is you take a deep breath and just, as you breathe out, center yourself, feel yourself anchoring yourself down into the hips and breathe in again welcoming that beautiful energy and air into your body and bring it down to anchor yourself into your hips the base of your spine one last breath bringing in that beautiful gift of the air into you and anchoring it down as you breathe out into your hips and then you can imagine this anchor going further down through your legs into the earth let the breath find its own rhythm in, rhythm as you imagine you're anchoring into the earth and like deep roots the roots of a tree going way down into the earth so that you can drink the nourishment of the beautiful powerful energy of the earth okay now that you stand firmly on the ground I'd like you to imagine and if you can't see things in images just pretend that you can feel it or know that you're in a situation that relates to the topic of yours that you've chosen where you feel free you feel completely content you feel love and loved you feel joyful and excited about being there Maybe you can see or feel what's around you, who's with you, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, just feel the sensation. And then try to imagine what belief systems you harbor, you are saturated with in order to be in this place. What do you believe in when you're there? Do you believe you're safe? Do you believe you're free? Do you believe that you can have anything you want? Do you believe that you can be loved and that you can love freely and openly? Do you believe, I'm giving you some examples, you can explore it yourself. Do you believe that you can be strong, that you can be healthy, that you are healthy, that health is natural to you, that you love money, that beauty is all around you, that things are easy for you. This is what you would believe if you're in that situation of freedom, of peace, of excitement. And explore. So this is an exercise that you can do for yourself. And when you're ready, when you've finished exploring, you don't want to do it too long. You just want to go there and feel it. So that you get used to the sensation of this new belief system, what it feels like to have this belief system in your body. And then you can start moving towards it. You will naturally will. You'll start adopting those thoughts. You'll start exploring them. And what happens? There will be no room for the old ones. The old paths will be overgrown. You'll, you've created a new path through the forest, as I spoke of on Monday. I do hope that you um, enjoy this. If you want to go deeper, your situation is different from anybody else's, so this is all very general, but they're good exercises for you to try. Now, if you want to explore further, you can let me know, we'll see if we can work together. Or just exploring these exercises, see where they take you. Try it, have fun, you never know. Something might shift, you might feel better. You will, I'm pretty sure, but it's up to you to decide. It's up to you to choose. So. That was it today. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you on Friday for the guided meditation where I'll guide you more extensively, more deeply into this, this world of, of the new beliefs that you want to own. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.